Hello world, my name is Andy Silvers, and today we're going to talk about the new HP ZBook Firefly G9. Okay, so for those who don't know, I am an author, YouTuber, and award-winning filmmaker. I make all kinds of content on this channel, but lately I've been focusing on tech. If you'd like to support the channel, uh, as this channel is not currently monetized, please check out my books. Don't worry, there's books for literally all ages. We got ones for ages 3 to 6, like The Very Colorful Caterpillar. We have one which is a coming-of-age story for ages 8 to 12, called Red Sprites and Blue Jets. And we have one for teens and adults, ages 16 and up, called Solomon Grando vs. the Jupiter Witch, that is a contemporary fantasy adventure book. All these books are available now on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble, and all of them will be findable in the link in the description of the video. Please check them out, it supports me, it supports the channel, and keeps content like this coming your way. Alright, so today I'm going to talk about a somewhat unusual Z-book. So HP has finally refreshed their ZBook laptop range. They haven't done this for all the desktops yet, but uh, I may cover those in a separate video. Anyway, today we're going to cover the new ZBook Firefly laptop. The Firefly is arguably the most unique and niche of all of HP's ZBook products. So, to break this down, you have the ZBook Fury, which is HP's top-end laptop. Not just their top-end ZBook, but literally the top-end laptop they make. Uh, that laptop has the biggest, baddest CPU, GPU, horsepower. It's very thick, like over, a little over an inch thick. I actually own the previous model of that, the Fury G8, and I love it. Uh, that laptop is thick and heavy, uh, and it is very powerful and extremely upgradable. Then HP has the ZBook Studio G8 and G9. That laptop is intended to be similar to the Fury in terms of performance, but it's a lot thinner and lighter and is designed, I would imagine, to compete with the new MacBook Pro 14 and 16. Uh, as such, it does not have the upgradability of the ZBook Fury, and it really doesn't have the horsepower either because its cooling can't quite keep up with the specs. However, it is still a nice product with a decent port selection. Then there's the ZBook Power G8 and G9, which are like the budget option. So those are not near as powerful as the Studio or the Fury, but it's okay because it's not quite as thick as the Fury, yet it still gives you a great port selection, except for an SD card slot. And it gives you a sizable amount of performance and a pretty sizable amount of upgradability, including two SSD slots, two RAM slots, um, and the battery can be removed. So, and the Wi-Fi, no, actually, I don't think the Wi-Fi card can be removed on the, the Power. Uh, I owned the ZBook Power uh, G7. I never owned the G8, but I believe the body design for all three of the, the most recent generations, the 7, the 8, and the 9, are all the same. Anyway, this leads us to the Firefly, which is a very interesting product because it does not have the horsepower of any of the other devices, uh, yet it has the price tag of a ZBook device. So the obvious question would be, who is the Firefly for? I have some thoughts on that, but I want to go over the spec sheet first, because that is the uh, part of the video I suspect that most of you are watching for. The idea behind the Firefly range is it's basically HP's sort of uh, entry-level ZBook. It's not the most powerful, but it gets you into the ecosystem. And it has all these sort of support and software and security and feature set and build quality of the other ZBooks. So HP have not done with the Firefly what they did exactly with the uh, ZBook Fury. The ZBook Fury used to have two configurations, 15 and a 17 inch. Now there's just a 16 inch, which is basically the middle between those. However, for the Firefly, there are still two sizes, a 14 and a 16. So they've done away with the 15, probably because this allows them to use the same screen from the Fury 16 uh, in this device. It's just from a sort of, from a supply chain standard, uh, this makes things a lot easier for them to just have one display option for all of the product stack. 
The 1920 by 1200 display uh, is 16 by 10 aspect ratio. And I just want to note that I think it's great that HP has finally increased the aspect ratio of their displays because my current ZBook is wonderful, but the bottom bezel is huge. And what HP have done is basically taken that bottom bezel and left it there. Well, they've left that area there, but they filled it with screen. However, I think what HP is doing is purposefully not putting a 3x2 aspect ratio in their displays yet so that they can do it later and say, look, the display is even bigger now. Uh, I really wish they just just jump, jump the shark, so to speak, or just hit the gas and just put a 3x2 uh, display in it now. But 16x10 is still much better for productivity, which is literally what ZBooks are designed for. Uh, like I say, the base model has 250 nits and a touchscreen. And I believe there's also another one that's 250 nits without a touchscreen. Uh, suffice it to say, I would avoid this at all costs. A device that costs this much money should not have a 250 nit screen. I understand that there's an HDMI port and you can technically plug in uh, an external display. But I just would not want a this high end of a business product without a without a decently bright display. It's just I just find it to be unacceptable, but it is up to you and what you want. The device features an improved webcam over last year and it still has a webcam privacy slider, which is extremely convenient for security. The device, speaking of security, also features HP's Wolf security software. The uh, operating system is either Windows 11 or Windows 10. I would recommend Windows 10 Pro as it is very stable and allows for remote desktop. The CPU has been upgraded substantially. It is now Intel's 12th gen uh, mobile chips. Uh, don't expect to find AMD anywhere because a HP has not used AMD for any of their ZBook products for the last several years. In fact, I'm not sure if they've used AMD CPUs ever. Uh, they do use AMD for their Elite and Elite Book lineup. So if you want a business laptop and you're in the market for the Firefly, but you're like, I want AMD, which is actually kind of me, actually, because uh, it comes with uh, very high core counts and low power consumption, check out the Elite Book um, laptops like the 15 and the 14. Specifically, you can get the Core i7-1255U, which is a 10-core, 12-thread CPU uh, with 12 megabytes of L3 cache that turbos up to 4.7 gigahertz. So this utilizes Intel's latest uh, 12th gen technology with a 10 nanometer process and what are called P and E cores. Some of the cores in the processor are performance cores that go max out on power and some of the processing cores are E cores or efficiency cores which are designed to save on power. This technology makes the CPU fairly powerful and fairly efficient. If you choose a dedicated graphics card, it will be NVIDIA's T550 laptop GPU with 4 gigabytes of GDDR6 laptop memory. This particular GPU is not very powerful, as you can probably imagine. However, it is more powerful than last year's T500 GPU. And importantly, it is a GPU with full certifications for... Uh, Adobe and other creative software like CAD modeling and design which is the main point of getting an NVIDIA T550. This T550 is basically a low-end Quadro although NVIDIA doesn't use the name Quadro anymore so be aware of this. It's not going to be supremely powerful but it will get the job done for uh, 2D CAD, light video editing and certainly Photoshop and Lightroom uh, as well. This laptop comes with a 3-cell 51 watt-hour battery, which is a little underwhelming for a 16-inch device, but we'll have to see how the performance and battery life actually are in real-world units when they become more readily available. Furthermore, the device comes with either a 65-watt or 110-watt uh, power brick. This is dependent in large part on whether or not you choose the dedicated graphics card option. If you choose a dedicated graphics card, it will be NVIDIA's T550 laptop GPU with 4GB of GDDR6 
uh, video memory. The RAM has been upgraded substantially, up to 64 gigs of DDDR5, 4800 MHz non-ECC RAM. Uh, 64 gigs is a lot of RAM for a laptop, and I suspect most people will be happy with 32 at the maximum. But 16 will probably also be great because this device uh, is running DDR5 RAM, which is extremely fast. Uh, and there are two SODIMM slots that are both accessible and upgradable, which is a big deal. On the last ZBook Firefly model, the RAM was not upgradable. If you chose the graphics card option, if you did not choose a graphics card, then the RAM was accessible and upgradable. It's just a matter of room. This device is thin and small, and there's only so much room for RAM, SSDs, etc. Speaking of which, there's only one SSD slot on this device, and it goes up to 2 terabytes of capacity. The port selection is basically exactly the same between the two sizes. Uh, it features uh, HDMI 2.0B, Thunderbolt 4, which makes sense because there's an Intel CPU. There's actually two Thunderbolt 4 ports. There are two USB Type A 5 gigabit per second ports, a headphone microphone combo jack, and there is a smart card reader, which is optional on most configurations, but it's something that a lot of business professionals will enjoy. Not to mention, there is also 5G support. Uh, not every model will have 5G, but if you want cellular data so that you can use this device on the go with your, say, Verizon plan, you can do that, and then you can insert a SIM card. As for the Wi-Fi, you get Intel Wi-Fi 6E AX211 card and Bluetooth 5.2. The keyboard on this device is very nice. It is relatively unchanged from, from before. There is still a fingerprint reader on the right side under the Enter key. Uh, and the trackpad appears to have been enlarged a little bit, probably in part because of the increased display aspect ratio. Um, I think that this uh, front of the device is exactly uh, as was said on Short Circuit, when they reviewed the ZBook Studio, they said that the device was the most laptop-y looking laptop ever. And I think they, I agree with them completely with the new Firefly, because it is so bog standard. Like, it, it almost looks like, like clip art picture of a laptop keyboard and trackpad setup. Not that that's bad, but it is worth mentioning, as it is not very stylistic. Okay. So I've covered most of the relevant specs of the new Firefly 14 and 16. The device appears to be extremely premium and high quality, and I would expect nothing less from HP's ZBook lineup. The question is, who is it for? Because if you want a very premium uh, business laptop, and all the ZBooks are technically business devices, uh, even though they're for creative business, um, if you want a high-end business laptop, HP has the Elite and even the ProBook series of laptops, uh, which are on average going to be cheaper than this and have very big promotions on a regular basis that bring the price down hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Uh, so this device is very unique in that it is not very powerful as compared to most other ZBook devices, yet it it still qualifies as a ZBook mobile workstation. So what kind of work would you be doing on this? And who is it for? I would argue uh, that this device is largely for project managers. So not necessarily the people who are doing the, the work themselves and actually sitting down in CAD and animating and designing and building, but people who need to overview and review this stuff from others. This doesn't have quite the horsepower to handle graphics intensive processes, but it does have enough to review files in these same pieces of software. It also doesn't have the uh, power supply necessarily to handle it either, uh, which makes sense. The Intel uh, i7 and i5 CPUs available are not exactly high end. And that's a good point. The core count has been improved since last year. Uh, 10 cores for a a mobile CPU that isn't really designed for high-performance graphics is substantial, but you're just not going to get the performance you would out of even AMD's Ryzen 7 5850U CPU and some of the 
uh, elite book laptops, and certainly you're not going to get the performance that you would get out of a 12th gen Intel chip and a ZBook Fury, ZBook Power, or ZBook Studio. This ZBook, I think, is great for being on the road because it has just enough power to get real work done, great keyboard, great security, which you will need if you're going to be tapping into Wi-Fi networks that are not necessarily your home Wi-Fi. Uh, it has uh, great build quality, so it can handle being thrown around and thrown in laptop bags and carried all over the world. And it has a great screen, which is extremely important because you'll need a great screen if for entertainment. Business professionals are not generally working 24-7 and being able to watch movies and enjoy other kinds of content is extremely valuable. So this ZBook, I would say, is for mobile business professionals, but not necessarily graphics-intensive business professionals. If you're doing Lightroom and Photoshop, it's fine. However, I should point out it doesn't have an SD card slot, so you'd be better off with another uh, HP product like the HP Envy, for instance, like the Envy 17, which is a great product that actually has an SD card slot. So again, it's such a niche product because it just it's it's so expensive that it's out of the price range of a lot of uh, you know business enthusiasts to people who are sort of dipping their toe into business. But it's also not powerful enough to really be a full blown workstation for that can handle everything you could throw at it. But I like this device, but I bought the ZBook Fury because I want something that can grow with me into the future and that uh, performance and graphics can handle uh, what I'm doing now where I'm editing you know, 1080p and 4K MP4 footage, but also can handle it in the future if I ever end up needing to edit 4K and 5K raw footage from a digital cinema camera. The laptop could grow with me. So let me know in the comments who you think the ZBook Firefly is for, if you think it's for you. If you have any questions, please ask them. I do typically answer most questions in the comments at this point. Uh, and also, please check out the books linked in the description. It really helps me out when you support the channel. And you're also going to be reading some awesome books. So check those out. They're for all the different age ranges. And I will see you in the next video.